Hello, everyone. My name is Mette. I am a business rhetorician, as Estlak said. I'm also a trumpet player. I'm here today to give you three musical keys to better business performance. What on earth has musical performance to do with business and rhetoric, the ancient Greek art of persuading people. And by the way, up in the corner, it's Plato discussing with Aristotle back in ancient Greece. Aristotle is the founder of rhetoric. This was the question I got almost a decade ago. A Scottish conductor I had at that time asked me after a concert, what is it that you do? He didn't know anything about rhetoric and business and my work as a speechwriter and coach. So I tried to draw some parallels between my work uh, with the leaders in business and his work as a conductor, which is also a leader job. And I said to him, Russell, listen, it doesn't matter much whether you're chasing applauses or financial growth. It's all about the peak performance. Like the conductor, the leader must be able to perform with power and presence. Like the conductor, the leader must be able to get to the point and speak clearly, especially in a time where um, tasks are becoming more complicated, markets, uh, there is a higher speed in markets. And finally, the conductor, like the leader, must perform with passion. Because, yes, content is important, but people don't follow content. People follow other people with passion. A great business performance and a great musical performance seems easy and lighthearted, but there is much more to it. It takes knowledge, tools and training. Let me just state a very basic thing about rhetoric in business, which is great contents fall flat if you don't perform it well. And so do you. So I think that's a good reason to practice peak performance in everyday business meetings and presentations. Of course, I didn't think much about musical performance and business performance and the bigger perspective when I started playing trumpet as an eight-year-old. But later on, with my education in my backpack and my practical experience, I realized something that I found was super inspiring, namely that in music, there is a very short way from the leader's performance to the organization's performance, which is very audible and visible. In business, on the contrary, it's a bit more blurry. The way from the leader's performance to the organization's performance can be longer, less audible and less visible. But I thought we can learn something here. And also, I found that, hmm, in business, we tend to overcomplicate and overthink the concept of business performance. Maybe we, too, we put it in too many Excel sheets. Maybe we should take a personal responsibility for our peak performance. So why make peak performance complicated? Let's make it simple. I have three tools with me today to enhance your personal peak performance. They are easy to understand easy to learn, but take a bit more time to master. Let's start with number one, which is about how you establish power and presence without a word. Isn't it about the speaking? You could say, yes, it is. But truth is, your performance starts before you even say a word. Let me sketch the problem. We're busy in business these days. Often, I think, hand on heart, we rush in and we want to get started, we want to be effective. So, yeah, let's get started. It's really exciting to be here today. Oh, I'm running out the marks here. I'm back. Um, so, so we want to get started because we want to do so good and we want to, to, to hit all, all the, the, the marks that we have set up for businesses. But we miss out on a massive opportunity to establish the power and presence that is so amazing to have in our performance. So how we come in, and to illustrate, and to make this point even more clear how important it is, I've brought a brass quintet with me, they're on the screen, uh, to show you how it looks when you do this rushed door start. So here's a bit of music, and let's look how this door start looks in music.
anybody in here been to a concert? You know, it, it's not supposed to look like this. It's supposed to look more like this. Come in, greet the audience. You probably don't take a bow in business presentations, but nonetheless, establish a presence. Sit down. Make room for peak performance. Go. <laughs> question, of course, is how do we do that in everyday business life? We do, as a musicians, follow this easy three-step method, which is, which is you come in, stand straight, because we tend to fall down a bit and squeeze our voice, and then speak. Stand straight, speak. Don't say this out loud, just think it in your head. Stand straight, speak. From one to two, I'll move on to the power circle. Power Circle is a training tool that helps you get to the point and stay at the point. We like to speak much and we probably have so many things to say that it can be difficult to get to the point and stay there. I'm going to show the exercise, but I got the idea from this guy behind me, Vasily Petrenko, a Russian conductor who I met in London with the London Symphony Orchestra. He's actually now the principal conductor of the Oslo Philharmonic. Um, and I was watching him conducting, speaking, conducting, speaking with the musicians. And uh, he was, of course, waving his baton around, and I, was, I also had a baton. Um, so I was waving that around, trying to figure out what is it with that performance that makes it so good, and how does he make the musician so good? And all of a sudden I realized that the length of a powerful sentence that is easy to remember for the speaker and easy to remember for the audience is exactly the length of a circle you draw in front of you. So, power circle. It helps you get to the point. It helps you see what you're saying. It helps you take pauses. It erases um, and stress. And besides that, it prevents us from dancing randomly around on stage, which can be very uh, not so good. Of course, I have to say this is just a practicing tool. So when you know what to say and you practice your sentences, you take the circle away. Because unlike the conductors, we cannot just go out in the world and just wave a, a wooden stick around and then magic will happen. My third tool is about mood. Mood matters. Often I met with content is king. And then I say yes. But only if you master the mood around your content. So content doesn't speak for itself. It's the person who speak and do something with the content. So your task is, whenever you're presenting something or speaking with other people, to ask yourself, what atmosphere and experience do I want to create? Is it a serious presentation? Is it the presentation of the new strategy? Is it inspiring? Should it be engaging? You need to show that in your voice, in your body language, because if you can do that, that will certainly be something that differentiates the mediocre performance from the peak performance. To show you exactly how much mood matters, I'll show you the brass quintet again. They will be playing another piece, the same piece twice, they hold the same tempo, they do no mistakes, but they play two very different moods. Your job is really simple here. It's just to absorb what they are doing and to figure out what mood they are giving to you. Let's watch the two videos. Leave the judgment to you. Let's move on to the next. Okay, 
Can you tell the difference? So if I come in like this and want to present something really exciting, you're not going to believe it. So you have to believe what you're doing and then show it to people. Wrapping up on this, you need to figure out what mood button you want to push with your content. These were the three tools. On top of the tools, I want to add something that I think is really important in your personal peak performance, which is passion. To me, passion is the X factor of peak performance. As I said before, I don't think people follow content. I think people follow people with the passion. And not only uh, do you have to know what you're passionate about in your leadership and life, you need to be able to communicate that passion. Otherwise, it has no value. So passion is extremely important. And I think also, when you know your performing, performance tools, you can be more free, you can be present, and you can use your intuition when you're up there performing. So passion is extremely important. Wrapping up, we've gone through power and presence without a word, stand straight, speak. You know how to get to the point with the power circle. And you know it's extremely important to peak perform what mood buttons are you going to push. Lastly, I will leave you with a mindset from the musicians, because they never go on stage just to play some notes. So next time you stand at the door or in the corridor before a meeting or presentation, think about your performance for a few seconds. And then do like the musicians. Don't play notes, or in more correct terms, don't give a speech, put on a show. Thank you.